Bakas, even after realizing that the shopkeeper is manipulating and he has cheated him, he cannot scold or ask or demand the shopkeeper. Now, Baka is very furious. He's raised with his anger. He wanted to go and take action against Pandit Kalinath, which he cannot. Hello, hi, namaste and welcome to Vidyashram First Grade College, the Temple of Excellence. I am Nanda Kishore, Faculty of English in Vidyashram, Mysore. In my previous session, I had discussed uh, the novel Untouchable written by Mulkraj Anand, prescribed to third semester BA and BCA Mysore University students. Before I go ahead in second session, let me just give you what I had discussed in session one. As we know that Mulkraj Anand has written this novel in 1935 and one of the first novels he wrote and the main character is Baka where he is the sweeper and he goes on sweeping and cleaning the toilets or latrines in his town Bulasha which is an imaginary town. Baka is a sweeper, young boy, 18 years old and in this novel, it depicts a day in his life. What are the things or what are the consequences or what are the happenings in his day? A day's life is depicted in his novel. We learn that Laka, who is Baka's father, scolds him every day morning to do his duty. Laka is very lazy being father and Baka is a motherless boy and he has two siblings Raka who is younger brother and Soini the younger sister. As the novel progress we get to know that Baka is called by Charat Singh the Havildar and the hockey player who promises him to give him the new hockey stick which he gets later and he plays well in hockey. Now when Charat Singh calls him he abuses in the beginning but later he shares his cup of tea when served to him along with Baka, where Baka treats him as a hero. As the novel progresses, Soini goes to fetch water from the well since Baka is very thirsty and Soini is assaulted by Gulabo, one of the characters and also the mother of Ramcharan. Meanwhile, on the other hand, Baka and Ramcharan, they are best friends, best buddies and Baka learns that Ramcharan's sister is getting married. Baka had feelings for Ramcharan's sister. Now this leads him to dejection. As the novel progresses further, now Baka is on the street. He wants to clean the roads, clean latrines. And he happens to light the cigar or cigarette taking the coal from a Muslim. This is very important. He cannot take the light from any other higher caste person. And moreover, we are not supposed to worry about whether he puffs the cigarette. But what worries the reader is the coal, the light he takes and lights the cigarette and that too from a Muslim. He cannot go and ask for the light or the matchbox from a higher caste person because he knows that where he stands. And as this is happening, Baka is very fond of sweets. He wants to buy sweets, but he is stopped for a fraction of a second. His father's abusive words strikes his mind and he just stops himself from spending the money on unnecessary things. But eventually, since he's very fond of sweets, he buys sweets for four annas. This is not rupees, four annas, like four paces. But he is cheated by the shopkeeper. He manipulates the weighing machine and Baka's even after realizing that the shopkeeper is manipulating and he has cheated him, he cannot scold or ask or demand the shopkeeper. 
because shopkeeper is a bit of higher caste and baka since he is untouchable he is very helpless and then what he does is he just munches the sweets and he stands observing the advertising boards when a high caste man runs into baka now baka is just standing but a high caste man without knowing he comes and collides he touches baka and starts scolding him he scolds him very badly and baka is very helpless and though it is not his mistake to blame baka is very silent he is taking the words from a high caste person he is very helpless and he is surrounded by the crowd now and that puts him in the center stage that there is no space to escape from this verbal abuse although baka is not to blame for the hurriness of the high caste man he starts abusing him and starts shouting about his presence so that others could know now here it is very important this could be asked for 5 marks or 10 marks this situation is such that baka has to go on giving a call untouchable call posh posh sweeper is coming these two words are very important here posh posh he says he has to go on giving a call go on crying that the untouchable is coming your way so please make way and please don't touch me it is like please i belong to lower caste and don't get defiled by touching me this high caste man he scolds baka saying that why couldn't you give me a call though it was the mistake of high caste man he starts blaming him and there is a crowd now couldn't help now baka is humiliated he is embarrassed he is hurt he still says he still apologizes for not his mistake even then the high caste man is not in a place to listen to what baka is saying all he is worried is about his defilement that i have touched the untouchable and i am defiled now baka pleads his apology but the man won't listen and soon a huge crowd circles him hard slap to baka now before this slap is given on his face there is a person there is a tanga wala right a horseman who comes and disperses the crowd who stops the high caste man from abusing baka and this man this horseman is a muslim this is very important no other people come to his rescue except the muslim a tonga wala he comes and convinces the high caste man and it infuriates even more it triggers his feelings even more and the man before he could leave gives a tight slap to baka now baka is broken many emotions flow from the furious and crying baka like anger frustration indignation and horror he is broken down into pieces because he has apologized first of all it was not his mistake he didn't go and touch the upper caste upper caste person he himself came and touched baka and for not his mistake he pleads an apology which is not accepted and apart from that above all this baka is slapped now this muslim had he not been there that would have been a totally different case baka gets up to leave when a shopkeeper reminds about the chant of the untouchables now he has to go on screaming al aloud saying that the untouchable is in your way he starts to sing the chant as he walks forward to temple now he just like he cannot take this embarrassment baka is very furious it just because he apologizes the high caste man that doesn't mean he's weak in one blow he could have brought down the upper caste person but he still resists his anger controls himself 
but still somewhere he has it within himself that just because he is an untouchable people are ill treating him next scene is Baka is confronted with many questions after that incident he keeps questioning status quo of higher caste people, high people, that why is that there is no equality amongst mankind. Barker realizes that his duty of cleaning latrines makes him repugnant to everyone in the society. This is taken for granted. Baka is taken for granted from everybody. And he rebukes himself that he has born to such a low caste family. Next, it is about temple. From there, he leaves and he walks towards the temple. And while walking, he gives a loud cry. Posh, posh, the sweeper is coming, way, make way. As he reaches temple, it is very peaceful. He sits there and he observes the few devotees are coming towards the temple. And meanwhile, when he is cleaning, he wants to enter the temple premises. He climbs the steps. He wants to see the God because he has never seen the inside of temple and never seen the idol of God. But somewhere it stops him from entering and just returns from the steps. Meanwhile, what happens is there is a worship going on and he is again triggered. And he wants to see the idol or the worship or the inside of the temple. He just climbs up the stairs and suddenly hears the cry. Now let us see this. Baka finally reaches the temple. As he is not supposed to enter the temple, Baka is always curious about the worship and the prayers used. He is always curious about it. He observes the temple, the priests, the hymns, the worshippers and is in divine state. He hears someone shouting polluted, polluted. When he is climbing the stairs, when he is about to enter, somewhat enter the temple, he hears this word polluted, polluted and alarmingly falls down in a prostrate position. Now these two words polluted, polluted, he thought that somebody had called polluted, polluted. It's because they might have observed Baka entering the temple and in order to stop him or in order to blame him they had used these words but the scene is totally different there slowly he, he realizes that the cry was not meant for him but for his sister Sohini. Yeah what has happened you should remember Pandit Kalinath had offered to pour the water from his picture to Sohini's picture when Baka was very thirsty in the first session and Sohini agrees to come to the temple later and to clean the premises. While this is happening, Pandit Kalinath he abuses, he molests. He holds the chest of Sohini and when Sohini rejects, when Sohini agitates, Pandit Kalinath he wants to save himself and he shouts polluted polluted had Sohini been accepted his offer of molesting or doing whatever he wanted then Pandit Kalinath wouldn't have used his words but when she rejects opposes he uses these words and there is a huge crowd of worshippers devotees they mob up and they escort, they, they chide both Baka and his sister Soini from the temple. Once Baka and Soini comes down or come out of the temple, Soini goes on to explain what had happened inside the temple and how Pandit Kalinath molested Soini. Now Baka is very furious, he is raised with his anger. He wanted to go and take action against Pandit Kalinath, which he cannot. Because Sohini is very clever, very mindful, very thoughtful. She knows that if Baka enters the temple and if he touches priest Pandit Kalinath, 
then he will be in much more danger, much more trouble. So to avoid this trouble, she convinces Baka and she sends away Baka from that situation. So he is very furious now. And then later what happens? Pandit Kalinath accuses Soini for intentionally touching him and abuses her in many ways. Here, what is the scene? It is Pandit Kalinath who has touched Soini. But Pandit Kalinath accuses Soini for intentionally touching. It is not Pandit Kalinath who touched. But it is Soini who touched Pandit Kalinath. Soini explains that Pandit Kalinath has tried to touch her which infuriates Baka. Soini realizes that it could end up bad, convinces Baka to leave the matter and leave the temple. He asks Soini to go back home while he leaves to collect food for the day. Now, he is very helpless. He asks Soini, you better go home. Yes? And then, high caste woman. Now, what is this? Baka is insulted many times for the day and it shows how dire the situation of a lower caste in the community is. Now he has drained out his energy, his mind is full of rage, anger and he goes and sleep in, in front of the house of one of the high caste women. And at the same time, there is a sadhu who comes and asks for the food from that house. And that cry wakes up Baka. When the woman comes out to give food for this sadhu, she is just shocked. Out of anger, she asks, she scolds Baka to get out of this place. But on the other hand, the other woman, when sadhu is going on asking for food, one of the women, she comes out and she gives chapatis for sadhu and even for Baka, in the same manner, she doesn't differentiate. Next, Baka moves forward and one of the women, she asks to come and clean the latrine or toilet or the bathroom and he does. After doing it, in return, the woman throws the bread on the floor. Rather than giving it to his hand or rather than putting it on a safer place, she throws it on the floor, dirty floor, and there is a human waste lying around. Seeing this, Baka is very frustrated and it, it, it is at the peak and he just puts down his broom in anger and picks up the food helplessly. If men try to take advantage of the women of lower castes, Women try to exploit the helplessness nature of men of lower caste or fulfill their needs. Baka goes from street to sea to beg food so that his family could eat. This is why he goes on begging for food. No one shows pity for him and finally gets tired of begging. Now he goes and sleeps there and Sadhu comes and he wakes Baka who is in deep sleep. First woman comes with food, some food to Sadhu and orders Baka to clean a gutter before receiving any arms. He does so and he asks to clean the bathroom, which he does. Then the Ayaka's woman throws bread into the ground for Baka to pick up. Unable to do anything, Baka picks the bread and frustrated throws his work broom on the floor. This is the scene of Doctor. Now after he picks up the bread, he walks towards his home and after reaching home, Baka gives the bread pieces which he had brought for the family because that is how they eat and that is how they make their livelihood. Now Laka, father, is very much frustrated because Baka has not brought good food and very less amount of food. Laka observes that Baka is in distress, is a bit upset. On questioning him, Baka tells how he was insulted in multiple situations, multiple times. Now Laka, his father, convinces, he tells a story how Baka was saved when he was very sick at the young age. The scene is such that when 
Baka was very young boy. He was very sick. And Laka, he rushes towards the doctor where he is not supposed to go and visit the place. He stands outside the doctor's house or the place and he just begs each and everybody literally to reach this message to the doctor so that the doctor would come to his house and cure the illness of Baka. So Baka reaches home dissoluted only to find his father's frustration for bringing just two pieces of bread. As Laka asks about small amounts of food collected, Baka says that he is not aware of many people in the town. Laka tries to convince his son that high caste people far superior are far superior to them in everything. Therefore, it is their duty to respect them without questioning. He reveals about a doctor who saved Baka from severe illness. Although the doctor recoils at the beginning, is a good example of following the Hindu Dharma as he saves Baka from death. Now what happens? Now Laka, he goes to the doctor. Remember he is standing outside his clinic and he begs each and every passerby to convey the message to the doctor so that doctor would come to his house and save Baka from severe illness. Again, there is a scene where he comes back and realizes that Baka is about to die, he is barely alive. So when he realizes that it is the last resort, he rushes back and this time he doesn't wait to anybody. He just enters inside the clinic or the house and all of the patients there, they scream out loud after seeing Laka, one of the sweepers, untouchable. And doctor is also very furious. But Laka is lying in a prostrate position. He falls on his feet and begs that he should come and save his boy. When this is happening, Laka's brother, Laka's, Laka has a brother and he comes and tells that Baka is about to die. So Laka rushes back to his house and when the things are going on worse, there is a knock on the door and it is the doctor who visits and who saved Baka from severe death. And that is why he says that Hindu Dharma, right? And they are very good people in the sense, even they have very good heart. After listening to this, now Baka is somewhat comforted. He is feeling fine, he is feeling okay, he is feeling comfortable now. So let us analyze what we have discussed in today's session. First concept is high class status. Now when you see Pandit Kalinath, we learn that Kalinath is from a Brahminical family, Brahminical society. Just because he belongs to that upper class, people believed that they could take advantage of any misdoings. And that is exactly what Pandit Kalinath did. He takes advantage of his caste, though it was his mistake. He rebukes, he scolds Soini for touching him, which she didn't. This is one instance. The second instance is, where the upper class person comes and touches, collides or, or meets Baka and just because he belongs to upper class and for no mistake of Baka, he slaps on his face and walks away. That is the second instance. And the third instance, imagine though it is not so important, when Laka enters or goes to meet doctor, the people around, they are ashamed, they are furious, they are angry now. The third instance. So, Mulkraj Anand is not just depicting about untouchability, but is also throwing light on the opposite side or the opposite group of weaker section. He says how 
strongly they dominated the lower section, subjugated them, harassed them. And what were the possibilities that untouchability people could inculcate in their lives? Helplessness of lower caste. We learn that Baka has been embarrassed a couple of times. First instance, we know that he has to go and ask for the light from a Muslim rather than asking from anybody else. In second instance, he knows that the shopkeeper, the sweet vendor is cheating him with weights, but still he is helpless. He knows that if he go questions, if he goes on asking, then he would be scolded. In third instance, Pandit Kalinath harasses and he damages the modesty of his sister and Baka is very helpless. He is well built, very strong, he is strong enough to bring down Pandit Kalinath for that matter but still he holds his nerves, he keeps his calm and goes away just because he belonged to the lower caste category. And next is justice unserved. For all the embarrassments, what justice was served to Baka? No justice was served at all. Baka has become a puppet in the hands of upper class. It is a sort of a toy where people play around with his emotions. Ultimately, Baka is everybody Baka is everything, but still is nobody and still is nothing. So that is it for today's session. I'm going to meet you in my next session. Until then, keep reading. Have a good day.